my, uh, my primary goal was to create instructional systems that were interactive, mm -hmm. little interactive technologies that mm -hmm. were serious enough for the teacher to help mm -hmm. diagnose skill deficiency and offer remedial suggestions to the teacher for how to deal with those skill deficiencies. Right. So it was the early, early years of special ed when the word was still just a brand new term. Mm -hmm. And our company was more or less a pioneering company in mm -hmm. terms of specializing in special ed. <laughs> and we experimented And my experiment, and, and I always had the robot in mind, but I, I said to myself, I can't just come out with a robot because it would be too toy-like and science fiction-like. So first I have to demonstrate the principle mm -hmm. that the robot has in mind. Mm -hmm. And the principle being give a child who is not motivated or interested mm -hmm. or performing uh, adequately right. an opportunity to play and interact and be physically involved mm -hmm. in the learning process. Mm -hmm. And you suddenly have discovered a medium through which you can communicate the most mundane information right. to a captive audience. Right, right. And <clears throat> which is why eventually we applied all of this finding to marketing because obviously consumers have attention deficit clearly mm -hmm. and resistance and emotional issues and stress right. and fears and suspicions and defense mechanisms. So everything that we do in marketing is because of what we learned in clinics and hospitals and schools and rehabilitation mm -hmm. centers because we're dealing with the same issues. Mm -hmm. You know, these children become grown-ups, except mm -hmm. we no longer need to label them as they are grown-ups because they're supposed to be normal. But they carry all those issues with them into adulthood. Exactly. We all do. Yeah. You know, we're emotional beings. Mm -hmm. So it was a fascinating experience for me to begin this early stage mm -hmm. of development in my company because as I was a child, I was challenged and criticized mm -hmm. for thinking of revolutionary ideas that in the minds of society were not logical or impossible, mm -hmm. thought of as impossibility. Mm -hmm. Because technology was still in its infantry, infancy in those, mm -hmm. in those days. And the average person would not assume that because you can think of an idea that it can be executed. Mm. You know, ideas that can be real are only real if today's technology or science makes it possible. Right. right. My argument, which I stuck to, to the death, you know, <laughs> and I had wonderful conversations, and not all my teachers were condescending or patronizing, mm. there were mm. some of them were extremely supportive and mm -hmm. very interested in listening to what I had to say and we had mm -hmm. the most wonderful uh, conversations and they inspired me even more mm -hmm. to pursue mm -hmm. with my goals. But my, my goals were, my, my ideas were, if humankind can think of something, it can be done. It's just a matter of time until technology catches up to that thought. Works connections, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I attached that very much to the educational system and I said, we need to inspire young students in the earlier stages mm -hmm. to not put their dreams aside simply because they're too fantastic mm -hmm. and too implausible or impossible or illogical mm -hmm. according to today's standards. And what we do today in, in our educational program, we give a free program to schools wherever we go mm -hmm. and we get our sponsors, our clients mm -hmm. to allow us to do that mm -hmm. by giving them all the publicity value. We, oh, sure. we, never, sure. we never claim that this is from us, we claim it's from IBM or Microsoft or Coca-Cola or Pfizer right. Pharmaceutical. Right. They get all the publicity and we do what we want to do is to give they're like the patron of the arts. Huh? Well, yeah, in, in we, some we love this, this, the formula that we have evolved. It's, mm -hmm. it's worked so well. We go into schools and we continue to tell children, what are you dreaming about today? And let me tell you a story about how this robot is in the class at that moment. It's a uh -huh. gathering. We usually do this in the auditorium or in the gym. Sure. And the robot walks in with its inventor mm -hmm. or one of my spokespeople. And we say, let me tell you a little bit of story about how this robot was born. Mm. It was born from the mind of a child your age. 
mm. who was in school thinking of creating this robot at a time when it was absolutely scientifically and technologically impossible to create mm. such a robot. Mm. So the thought and the dream would have washed away were mm. it not for the fact that that student held on to that dream and kept pursuing that goal until technology made it more possible. Mm. Mm. What are you dreaming about right now? And let's hear impossible things and mm. talk and kids will talk about teleportation, you know, they, they come up with science fiction mm -hmm. stuff. And we tell them, we say, well, do you know that there's a scientist in Europe that has successfully faxed a particle of matter from one location to another? Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of teleportation. Right. Uh, and we just go on and go on. Mm -hmm. Invisibility, cloaking. Well, mm -hmm. do you know that there are many, many scientific research mm -hmm. programs all over the world right now that are uncovering coverings and surfaces that light cannot bounce off of. Mm -hmm. and light actually will curve around mm -hmm. and the object can be rendered invisible mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of time until these surfaces can prevent all the light spectrum to bounce off you know certain mm -hmm. colors still bounce off mm -hmm. and it's just so these things mm -hmm. you would have been burnt at the stake for even thinking <laughs> of that you know a hundred years ago right. and, and but all these things so what humankind can dream of can eventually be made possible defying gravity flying through the air well you know we've figured out that if we freeze things mm -hmm. or if we if we manipulate matter in a certain way right. sometimes we can make objects not respond to the laws of gravity mm -hmm. it happens in a laboratory with a tiny little magnet or a little mm -hmm. something but that's the beginning of superconductivity and magnetism yeah. yeah so we and and the kids are going it's true, you know, and the teachers are even themselves going, okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. plausible. And we give them actual examples. We don't mm -hmm. say just, you know, anything could be. So this this is uh, the beginning of empowering mm -hmm. right. students in the school mm -hmm. because, and it's not because we criticize the school system. You can't change the school system, the infrastructure of the school system. You can't change that overnight. Mm -hmm without spending billions and billions of right. dollars. You know, you can't individualize mm -hmm. uh, tr teaching. You can't teach to each individual child in a different way. One of the things that we've uncovered through our interactive technologies, and subsequently the robots would became the next generation of those interactive mm -hmm. tabletop machines. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to make these machines more anthropomorphic Mm. So that as you interacted with these machines, you were also practicing real life interaction with mm. the human world mm. and teaching yourself to communicate openly, honestly, mm. Mm. and in a extroverted kind of manner mm. where you were not afraid to express your true feelings. Right. Because you're speaking to an entity that doesn't judge you, doesn't hate you, and and doesn't compete with you, mm -hmm. it's just there and, and it's compassionate and loving and caring and attentive and interested mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. because of the way we design and control our robots because mm -hmm. we developed this whole psychology of how the robot's aesthetics have to be. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why our robots don't appear totally human is because we're not prepared in this society, in this modern society yet to f come face to face with a replica of ourselves. Right. That's mm -hmm. a little bit too scary, Uncanny Valley, too much competition thing, yeah. there. Yeah. So we like robots that look perfectly human and when they are at Disney World, they're on stage over there and we're here and we're the audience and they're just puppets. That's, that's Abraham fine. Lincoln, that's Jimmy Carter. Make that Abraham Lincoln come off the stage and walk up to you and shake your hand. <sighs> Whoa, that's a whole different story. Right. But create these types of robots mm -hmm with the, for, the right formula, the height, mm -hmm. the ergonomics, the aesthetic, the architecture, and more importantly, that all of this put together, the psychological makeup. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we uncovered is that if the robot is going to behave like a machine, it's going to be very predictable and it's not going to allow us to relate to them. Mm -hmm. So for technology, again, if I may backtrack a little bit, sure. our long-term mission, because of these decades of experience is to help others mm -hmm. who are developing intelligent technology mm -hmm. to understand how to perhaps add the right aesthetics 
the right ergonomics, the right mm. architecture, mm. and the right psychological makeup. You know, how mm. to program behavior into those machines so that they're more socially acceptable and they mm. have the unprecedented ability to cohabit with humankind mm. with readily, by readily being accepted in a spontaneous manner the way mm. our robots are immediately accepted when they walk into a room. Mm -hmm. So, in a, in a sense, our company has become the precursors of the intelligent machines from a social mm. standpoint, mm. Mm. social psychological standpoint, mm. where we're preparing society for a day when these robots will walk into that room, but mm -hmm. totally on their own, <laughs> you know, on their own power and say, right. what can I do for you? Do you want me to vacuum the floor, go get some, some water right. in the refrigerator, or mm -hmm. help do your accounting work, or, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. We've observed over the past several decades how people get very rapidly frustrated and bored and lose very mm -hmm. rapidly interest in technology if it does not perform according to their own perceived level of intelligence. Right. 